What's going on, guys? Uh, it's Hoops here. Just doing a quick live for you guys, and uh, hopefully we can get some people viewing this whilst we're going. But uh, I wanted to just do a quick video for you, and like I said, go live because I haven't done much lately, and I've only just got home from work. So cool. So we might just uh, wait a bit and see if we can get some people uh, on online. Um, you've got the chat up here. This can throw up some comments on the chat as soon as you jump on. And I'll get to showing you guys what I'm doing here and I'm gonna give you a demonstration. So I'll uh, give it a minute. Yeah. Now we've got a couple of people by the looks of it going on. So I will give you a demonstration soon, but I just want to jump on. Um, I'll start heading, hitting it properly in a minute when I've got a few more viewers. I think there's two. Uh, one might have just dropped out. But, yeah, that viewer that's uh, online now, you want to hit that little thumbs up button or chuck a comment down and know who it is and say good day and we'll uh, – Chat whilst we're doing it. Oh, uh, yeah. It's actually uh, just after 3 o'clock, so it's school time, so we may get someone walk through the door in a second, so we'll see. But anyway, um, whilst I do have yous, because people might view this afterwards, even though it's not live anymore, but um, this weekend I did a video just the other day on um, <clears throat> the chucking a GoPro down the uh, new cave that we found. So um, this weekend, you would have probably seen on another video that I've done a while back, um, we went to a cave that's nearby my joint called um, Morphet's Cave. And um, this weekend, um, with permission from the, the um, land council and um, the Aboriginal, the Aboriginal Council have given us permission to go into um, one of the world like really known caves called Morphet's Cave. Uh, so me and Michael did a video there where we actually went and cleaned up the cave and uh, collected all the cans and bottles and all those sorts of things and um, did a big clean up of the cave. So um, those guys are going to come down this weekend, Sunday I believe, and um, we're all volunteering to go and clean up Morphet's Cave again. But this time it's got, um, there's a lot of graffiti and stuff like that on the walls. So we're going to go down there with the high pressure cleaners and uh, clean up all the graffiti on the walls and then, yeah, like do a proper full um, clean. And they're going to show us how to do it properly. So it's not just a matter of just blasting the walls because uh, there's a lot of stuff inside caves that you want to protect. So we're going to um, get shown how to do it. I don't know if I'll be able to do a video, but we'll see. Uh, oh, Reedy, really? what's up, Poops? Hey, buddy, what's going on? Not much. My, uh, I think you would know, but my wife's car decided to die the other day, and it's um, possibly the uh, timing chain. So we're kind of struggling at the moment because we have to use – my car, which is a 100 series Land Cruiser, and it's a V8 petrol. So it's cost me about $170 to fill it up, and you get about 500 Ks to a tank. So it's a rather expensive car to be driving around. Um, my wife does a lot of uh, stuff with her church, and she does a lot of stuff with the school, school pickup, drop-off, uh, activities after school, uh, things like that, and yeah, I really don't want her to have to not do her extra curriculum activities that she wants to buy a Ford. Come on, mate, I've got more brains than that. I bought a Toyota. <laughs> nah, if I had my way, we'd have two Tiranas, but no, nope, I don't get my way with Eric, so <laughs> but yeah, her so her car died. Uh, and we are really poor at the moment, so we are saving up money to try and get a, hopefully it's just the timing chain, and um, 
we'll get the timing chain fixed and done back in the car and hopefully her car will be all good again so then i'll uh, be able to go with my car which makes it really difficult because i want to go do a few videos uh this week because i'm off for three weeks right guys too by the way um i'll probably be getting surgery on my knees and um well on my knee so i'll probably be out for a little while and uh yeah that should probably maybe cause a bit of mayhem to the hoopers mayhem channel but i'm going to try and see what i can do i oh, should be right after a week or two and be able to walk but maybe i can just go fly my drone and do those sorts of things but yeah um what's wrong uh what's broken oh so i think uh where are you being you're still on instagram yeah mate we're still on instagram mate it's still there kicking along we uh I've been putting some posts up every now and then. Well, quite a few, fair bit of posts on uh, my Instagram account. So, yeah, that's been pretty cool. And yeah, what's broken was the we think it's the timing, the timing chain because I started the car up. And, um, yeah, it kind of sounded a bit like that. Something rattling inside it. So yeah, the connection is unstable. Please wait while we. Am I still live, guys? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we tried starting her up, and the uh, the belts are moving. So the starter motor is actually starting up. You know, he's kicking in gear, and the belts are moving. So uh, you can hear a sound coming from the front of the engine. It's actually an east-west motor, so it's coming from the, the side of the engine, and we're right where the the chain is. Um, I put a um, I think they're called an OBD two on it this plugs into your computer and it come up with a uh, camshaft warning um idle uh, or something but we um i had a mate tell me that yeah he thinks it's probably if it's from that code it's either a sensor or the chain but to me it, it's probably more the chain because you can actually hear something rattling around so i'm not going to try and touch it too much anymore in case i do more damage to it but yeah we'll see how we go uh, right, so this video, um, if you're watching, is I'm going to show you how I'm making up these little white packets. They're actually uh, cotton wool buds and petroleum jelly. And I'm just going to do a quick show of how you do it because I don't want to make a video of this. I figured I'll just do a live video and then um, I might be able to do it. What is broken in in the Yoda? Yeah, that's what I'm t I told you, hey, didn't I? It sounds like it's the timing chain broken in the Toyota Rav4. So yeah, all right. So I've just got a Ziploc bag, and I'm going to feed in like a bunch of these cotton wool buds, just a just a few, like this. All right. And then with my petroleum jelly, you're going to get a scoop, just a, a small amount. Uh, you can sort of see that. Yeah, probably get better. Just a small amount. Put it in the bag. Spread it out. All right, and then just, um, it's Justin Venus. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you put a small bit in your bag. All right, so now you're just going to take most of the air out and then just work these cotton wool balls around and give it a few bit of a rub around because you want those cotton wool buds to get as much petroleum jelly on them as you can. All right, so you just want to roll them around in the bag, move them around, toss them in between each other and sort of just roll them in. So I'm going to give you a demonstration in a second, hence why I've got this little metal tray and um, I've got my fire still on and i'm going to show you how easy these things are to light up so just uh bear with me but i want to show you guys how they actually how i make them so i'll just make a small batch and then we'll do it. and then i'll light one of these ones so you can see that it's all legit and it's uh live so you're going to be able to tell that it's hasn't been edited or anything like that so yep once you've got a few in there you can do the same thing chuck in a, a ton more um yeah so luke eight 
13. So that's um, the Bible verse. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you meant. Have I still been you're still on Instagram? Yeah, like I pretty much post, I don't know, all the thought daily or at least every couple of days. But, I mean, I'm, I work week on, week off, so I fly away. I think you're in America, aren't you, Luke? I think. If it's the same Luke I'm thinking of. Um, I work FIFO, so it means I fly, I leave here on a Wednesday, and then I fly to my work, which is based in the middle of uh, WA in Laverton. And um, I, work, I work for eight days, and then they fly me home, and then I come home for six days. So uh, when I'm up in uh, Laverton, there's not much things to take photos of whilst I'm up there. So, um, so yeah, I kind of sort of just save some of my photos that I take at home when I'm fishing or doing something out in the bush or, you know, just whatever. I s try to save some photos just so I can constantly post. So, yeah, I have been on my channel and on my Instagram quite regularly, I thought. So, yeah. All right, so they're pretty wet. I'm just going to throw in some dry ones because that's probably, they're probably a little bit too wet. So a few more dry ones. I mean. All right, I'm nearly done, and I'll, I'll get to lighting it because I don't want to lose the viewers that are on here at the moment, and I want to show you guys something really simple when it comes to camping and things like that, and your, your wood's wet or, you know, just a simple way to get your fire started with one of these little cotton buds. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of tins and then I'm going to give away a heap of uh, fire starter tin, so I'll have a fire striker like this one here. Uh, I'm going to custom make them. This one's a bought one, but I'm going to custom make the fire strikers. I'm going to go out in the lathe and make cool little handles for them. Uh, I'll add some of these in there. I've also got um, some uh, grass trees because we're not allowed to call them black boy anymore, but that's what they used to be called. But this is actually the the flower spike of a black boy, which I turned on my lathe, and um, I've tapered this end. Uh, I put a nice little groove in the guts there, and then I've rounded off that end, and that's called your spindle, and this is your base block. So in here, you'll see I've cut out a little groove, and then that's got that little bit, so that spindle now goes in there. And if I can get the camera down a bit, Probably not. No. Anyway, basically, rest your foot on here. And you put a, a piece of wood on the top there, and then you get your bow drill. And then with your bow drill, you put your cord over that little groove and back and forth, and this will spin like this, and that's what's caused friction fire, and it will drop bits of coal out there. And then you collect it in a bit of paper bark, and then you transfer it. You can put one of these on there, blow it, boom, fire straight away just by using a, a spindle from a black boy tree, a grass tree. Not being racist, it's just what we used to call them as a kid. So, yeah. Container of diesel works too. It sure does. But you're not going to have a container of diesel everywhere, as this could fit in your pocket. Um, all right, so I'm almost done. Just wanted to rub a few of these together, and then I'll, I'll uh, light one and show you. I reckon that's pretty good. And these just, yeah, like I said, it's easy to have these in your pocket, Jado. Um, it's just, a, like I said, a little bag like that. You get a little tin, put that in there, put a fly, um, fire steel, put a flint, um, a fire lighter, uh, matches, a lighter. Um, just it's basically just a backup so you've got this sort of stuff um, if you're ever in need of it I suppose so all right so all you're gonna do so usually I put about four or five of these this will light about 50,000 times I don't know how many times exactly but it lights and you use it to light your paper paper bark or your little branches and then you can pull it out blow it out Put it, whack it back in your bag, and yeah, you you can constantly light this thing. So yeah, it doesn't take much to do it. So alrighty, now it's trying to get this. Yep, 
There we go. Can you all see that? Maybe I'll put it a little bit higher. I think you can see it. Surely you can see that. If it doesn't work, this is an epic failure on my behalf, so sorry. But yeah, all we're doing is. Oh. Oh. First pop. No. Oh. We'll get it right. It does relight, trust me. It's just being stubborn and it's in an awkward position, but yeah. There we go. So it'll it'll burn for ages and then you obviously you stack your fire around it, blow it out, just turn my fan on. And um yeah, you put you can just whack that back in your bag, even though it's just a little bit little bit charcoal, you just whack it back in your bag. That will relight dozens of times. You, all you want to do is just get it so you've got a flame and then you're gonna obviously put it out. It's been awkward up being up so high, but when it's a bit lower, you can direct your charcoal out of it. There we go. Usually doesn't take much. Anyway, I'll probably stop doing that because I'm inside and uh, I've got my exhaust fan on my vape room here, which is up there, so I should suck it out. Anyway, that was just to prove that it does light and it is pretty handy to have in your uh, survival tin, uh, your fire started tin. So we always keep these. And um, this, like I said, this is me fire still, so that just I'll just put it on a necklace, just chuck it on, chuck it under my shirt. You can't even tell it's there. So yeah, that's it. Pretty cheap to make too. This is just a uh, Coles um, essential petroleum jelly that was like. $2.50. Um, we all know cotton wool bud. That was just a cheap brand cotton wool bud. They were the same. They were only like probably two or three bucks. And um, if you've got Ziploc bags, that makes it a hell of a lot easier to try and get these uh, in there. So it's pretty easy. Hey, hey, what's going on? Nice, easy fire start. Exactly. Simple, simple. Two seconds. You are. Uh, as long as you make them, chuck them in your bag, uh, bang, straight away. You, if you want to get one of these strikers too, um, if you're in Australia anyway, uh, I bought this one from um, Kmart in the sporting section up in Kmart. They had, or in the camping section, they had these. They were only like, I don't know, six, seven bucks, but it came with uh, a couple other things. I can't remember exactly, but... Um, yeah, they're not very expensive. And then, like I said, a couple bucks this. You can just, if you wanted to, you could make them up in little bags like I've been doing and then get a big Ziploc bag, whack it in there, then put your flint in there. You can put a bit of paper bark in there. You could put, um, get, I'll show you. I'm going to do a video later on, um, we get to, I'm going to do a video of me doing different ways of lighting the fire. So I'm gonna demonstrate, I did do it in one of my other videos, but I'm gonna demonstrate how simple and easy a bow drill, the bow drill is out of the grass tree uh, flower spike. So that one's pretty easy to do. Um, I'll do a better one of this. I'll actually go and set the wood up and actually show it lighting up. I'll do it that way. Um, there's other ways where you can collect the link from your dryer and um, put them in eggshells just like clumps of them in your eggshell about the same size as a cotton wool bud and then you just get uh, wax from a candle and you can pour wax over the candle or you can use petroleum same same deal um, it's just lint lint from your dryer I mean it's basically what I'm doing here instead I'm using cotton wool but lint um, you basically pull it out of your dryer you usually throw it in the bin so why not make your fire starters out of uh, your lint here we go Stephen Lenz. Hey, mate, I'll get to watch you live again. <laughs> I'm not working tonight. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's handy. I'm not working tonight either. No, I just flew home yesterday. So I uh, today, me and my wife went down to the doors were cut, had a bit of a fish, got a few King George Whiting. Uh, it was more of just a chill-out time for both of us to um, 
spin with each other, so I didn't film it or anything like that. But yeah, we got a we got a couple of King George for for a bit of a fee, so that was pretty cool. And then um yeah, I got came back home. We got a party tonight for one of the kids' birthdays, so I'm gonna go out and show them the fire. I'm gonna get them all to uh, have a cotton wool butt each, and I'm gonna give them my fire striker, and I'm gonna make every single kid that comes over tonight show me that they can light a fire with a cotton wool bud and a fire steel what do you reckon i might take photos of them and i'll put them on my instagram steven uh, not steven sorry luke so you will see uh some photos of i guess of um me teaching the kids how to light a fire uh, i literally just a minute ago before i did this i wanted to show my son kai and um i took him into the kitchen and yeah, he'd had a go and took him a little while to get it to actually strike because this strike is not the best, but it's, it still works. Um, you've got to get a decent woof off it to get it going. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, so, so tonight I'll uh, teach the kids how to light a fire. And, um, yeah, but I want to do, like I said, i am probably lost my train of thought. That's my ADD kicking in. But um, I want to do a series of videos showing you different methods of fire, the friction by fire by friction, which is these ones. Um, I'll do the fire steel, um, and I might do something crazy. So, and um, we'll see how we go, but yeah. Some input on my channel would be nice too. I'm gonna leave some comments on some of my videos. I wanna know what sort of stuff you guys want, like watching of mine. Like some of my mates say they like all of it, but I mean, surely, there's ones that you just think, oh, that's boring. I like the caving ones better, or I like the tunnels, or I don't know. But yeah, I'm trying to try to mix things up and do a few different ones. And um, my niche is a little bit mental, and it's all over the place. But um, yeah, that doesn't matter. I've got my Tirana Resto, which I haven't done a video for a while in the winter, and then I've got my outdoor stuff and. Um, my drone flying, which you, you will actually have to put up with for a bit because um, of my knee operation that I've got to get done from uh, my meniscus, tore my meniscus from um, operating machinery at work, on a dozer primarily. Um, fishing, yep. Yeah. We're going to, um, well, tomorrow actually I'm thinking maybe I might go take the tinny out, the dinghy. And um, go and sit out on the channel there and see if I can uh, catch some some more uh, whiting with my dinghy and um, maybe try and chase a few tailor. But I'm not sure. The weather's looking pretty crappy at the moment. It's meant to rain all weekend. So we'll play it by ear. But I really want to do some more fishing. And the weather's getting better. So um, you know, have a look at this too. I got sent this by a... Um, a guy on Instagram, uh, Australian Bushcraft Crew. So this is going to be, he actually sent me two, and a sticker, I believe, which is somewhere. So I'm going to run that 1,000 subscriber um, prize very shortly because I'm at like 850-something. And um, when I when I reach 1,000, I'm going to give away uh, – a big prize it's going to be huge it's going to be i'm um, making things all the time i'm getting things from people um i've got one of these i've got a lady from who does tie-dye um things she's going to do some um uh, what do you call them those ones that go around your head bandanas um some cool army green shirt maybe and um i will going to link all these people that are are donating things to me and like i said i'm going to be making stuff i've got mr white's four by four fishing um i'm um, four by four uh, and accessories stickers i'm going to put them in there i've got some of my old venom venom vapor stuff i'll throw in a shirt for you guys so that'll be another thing for the prize um i'm probably going to make another some um, seller's wrench or yeah whatever people call them they're all different names but uh, the all Scotch Eye Auger. I'm going to make one of them. That's going to be part of the prize. So this prize for the 1,000 subscribers is going to be massive. But I'm either going to give it all to one person or I'm going to spread it out and um, do a whole bunch of different ones. I should do some videos of good, free, or cheap campsites, Daniel. Definitely. Yep, for sure. 
Um, yeah, I'd rather, I like, well, camping on the beach, that's always free, but the bush, and um, I know plenty of spots for camping. So, yeah, now summer's coming into play. Um, there's going to be some really cool camping spots and cool videos coming our way because of the weather. There's going to be so much better. We've been waiting for so long just for this weather to bugger off, and it's still hanging in there. Like like I said, this weekend it's going to pour down rain, but, um, yeah, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully you'll see some uh, cool ones soon. But, yeah, I like that, camping, fishing. Um, what else you guys got on there? Well, that's it. But yeah, let me know. Like, what what else do you want to see? Do you like hiking? Do you like the caves? Do you like the tunnels? And kind of avoiding doing the tunnels at the moment because it's um, in snake country at the moment. There's plenty of snakes out and about. They're actually getting really active now, and there's been lots of people seeing them. I've just actually heard about six dogs die in the in the area um, from someone today from snake bite. So. They are getting better, um, getting worse. So I'm kind of avoiding the tunnels for now, but I do want to do some more. Uh, metal detecting. So do you guys like my metal detecting ones? Uh, can you think of some good ideas for places to go even? Because um, like I like the beaches and stuff, but I actually like finding old historical stuff. Um, so there's a guy I follow on Facebook, and um, he lives down the road. And he knows of so many cool places, but I don't think he's keen to share them, <laughs> which I don't blame him because he's finding cool stuff. But if anyone wants to share with me where they know some old whole, uh, old homesteads or uh, old buildings or you know things that may have popped up in here, like the old Drake's Book Days and Maroon Years book that I've got, it's got some old um, history and old places and abandoned places, but I can't find any of them because... Yeah, who knows where they are, but I want to find old places like that and then uh, go metal detect, maybe find some old coins, can find some badges, um, cool stuff. I'm up near Calberry. That would be awesome. I'd love to go up to Calberry. But you know what? The furthest, and it's really, really depressing, is the furthest I've been up is Geraldton. <laughs> and that's embarrassing. So there you go. I said it. West Australian. As far as he's been up as west in uh, is Gerald. I've been all the way over to Tassie. I drove over to Tassie and back. I flew over there a few times. I've uh, been to the Northern Territory and all across the bottom end, but I've never been up. I've just uh, don't know why. Never just never really gone up north, but I've gone up as far as Joro, and um, I want to. I want to go up. To Calberry on Caratha and Carnarvon and uh, Newman, Tom Price, Broome, all those places. Exmouth. Oh, that's uh, You know, I just want to. There's a few places there that I've just spread out that I want to uh, want to go to, and I haven't been able to. But money's always an issue. You work in FIFO, you kind of live a FIFO lifestyle, and you sort of put yourself. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but I've got my house mortgage, my cars, and a few extra things there that I'm paying off. I mean, it's good because one day I'll own it, but it kind of makes it very difficult to live and do these extra things because you're kind of just paying off mortgages. But anyway, enough about that sad story. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I like your prospect because I'm into it too. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we'll do a video together, Brady. Jeff, that will be sick. I haven't seen you in years, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, I love my prospecting too. Well, just metal detecting, but prospecting. Um, my, my dad and my brother go out and they've uh, got the U-Butte. Um, I can't remember what it's called now, but yeah. It's actually on one of my videos. You see the, the, the um, metal detector there. And um, they go out and find gold up in Cow and off, the, off somewhere. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing it, but... Uh, another hour and a half north from Jordan, yeah. I do, we we, we used to, every year we go up to the Espens. I was actually supposed to go this break, um, but um, yeah, due to my knee operation, there's no point in me going to the Espens, which is literally, I don't know, you'd be able to tell me, it's probably 20 minutes uh, south of Jordan, so it's called South Greenwich, Greenwich, yeah. So, no worries, Steve. You had to run, so yeah. 
wish I could see it. That's all good, mate. You'll be able to what, re replay this video, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I, we got up to, to uh, the Espen Park, stay at the Espen Caravan Park, and then straight out the back there you go fishing off the uh, the beach there, and there's really good um, massive tailor off the beach. You get huge tailor, and you get Mulloway a bit further down at Lucy's and uh, Flat Rocks. You get all the tailor, and uh, I've caught Flathead there, and um, you get apparently you get Pink Snapper and stuff like that off the beach. But yeah, we just got tailor, but I love tailor. Uh, they're really, really good to catch. So, uh, what else? I I will do show you this too. It's not exactly pretty at the moment because all my stuff is stuffed in there. But I bought a Osmo uh, Mobile Three combo. It's a pocket mobile pocket thing. Basically, you put your camera on there, and you can control the joystick of which way the camera goes back and forth, up and down, zoom in, zoom out. And you can auto track. So, like, say this person here, I can press and put a make a square around her face, and then wherever she, if she start, gets up, my camera will lift up, look at her, and it will follow her everywhere she goes. So that's really cool. This is going to be a really awesome added uh, feature to my videos. So that's pretty cool. The Osmo, D, but DJI it was that 100 and something bucks. It wasn't very expensive at all. But um, you would have seen my mate. Mad Dog, who I did a video with um, last break, which was the live collaboration video. He he's got one of these um, DJI, and it's I can't remember. He'll probably kill me if I say it's Osmo. I don't know if it is or not, but it's a big one. It's massive. It's huge, and it's awesome. Like uh, really, really high technology piece of equipment. So it's really cool. But yeah, I just got the pocket one because I just use my phone. Um, I need to get another digital camera i got the nikon here but it actually is that's only for photography so it's not for filming but um i just use my my phone for my all my videos so that's probably um my downfall i guess with my my videos the quality of my videos but hey you, sh you don't have to be a millionaire and buy all these expensive toys and equipment just to make a youtube channel so uh yeah my labs are the go yeah that's that's what it is it's an sdc 2300 or I don't know you probably could tell me but it's it's a weapon uh, yeah that's it yeah um, and then my old man he's got this other one and it folds up and that's what he had the uh, the big mine lab before that which is like I think it's ten thousand dollars or something stupid like that or eight thousand so he sold that and bought this new one uh, I think it's a mine lab. Maybe that's the SDC. I don't know. But anyways, he bought this new one, and it it's all foldable, so the arm folds up, and um, the stock slides in on itself, and it ends up being sort of this big, and it's heaps lighter than the other one that he had, which was just oh my gosh, it was it weighed a ton. But my brother has that one, and it's got a coil on it, like massive coil, and yeah, he picks up so much gold. If yeah be cool if he was live but with us at the moment because um yeah he'd be able to write down here what it's called or whatever but he's a really cool uh metal detector so i'm waffling on and i've asked you guys what he's like and i've got a fair idea of some of the cool stuff he's like me doing so that's pretty cool but i might uh i don't know end it end it, end it because there's not much else that i need to tell you but yeah wednesday i'm going for my hopefully my knee operation and I, that'll probably put me out for about two weeks, I guess. And um, yeah, I'm, my guess is that probably the first week that I'm out, I won't be able to do much at all because I'll probably be too sore to move around. And uh, But by the second week, I've got a feeling that I should be able to walk around. They're saying that by the second week, I should be able to walk around. Um, they're even saying I should be able to return to work, but I don't know how that's going to go, whether that's going to be the case because I'm a machine operator so might have to go back to work and go light duties or they might keep me home it all depends on how they how successful this operation is but yeah like I said I tore the shock absorber in between my two knees there's a shock absorber in there and I basically tore a big section of it out and um, apparently that section there doesn't get any blood flow hence why it doesn't heal so when I heard it 
months ago, I sort of came home on my, my son's birthday and I was like, oh, my knees are a bit sore. Like, it felt like it was bruised. And then by the time my end of my swing happened, it went away. And then I'd go back to work a couple of days into it, start getting sore again. And yeah, it was just, just on going. And I was just sort of, it's weird. I thought it was just a bruise. But then, um, yeah, my work wanted me to check it out. And yeah, it turned out I tore it. So, and it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't heal itself. It just stays there. So they're going to actually uh, go in with keyhole uh, operation day surgery and they cut that tear completely out and um yeah, it's only a really quick procedure but um yeah i've heard of stories from being it from two weeks to three months four five six months even um where people have um recovered a lot slower so hopefully um hopefully i'm not on that side of things yeah they're not cheap that's right that we're talking about the mind labs here yeah um i'm positive my dad's first one was like 10 grand or something and then he sold it and got like eight or but he hadn't didn't have it long he just found it to be too heavy and uh, he's an older fellow you know so not, but he's old but yeah he um, just found it a bit too sore in his back he did have the harness as well and the arm that folds out and you can use it and it sort of lifts the weight off it but it was just big you know like he's got a caravan he wants to downsize things and make things smaller so he can fit more in his caravan so this new one that he's got folds all up and it's a lot lighter and it's waterproof. It's basically the same unit and it's ranked pretty high, you know, like it's a good good, um, good metal detector. So I've got the Garrett, I don't know, you can't see it, but I've got the, um, the AT Gold Garrett there, which is actually Dad's, but he lends it to me to go do all these videos and things like that. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I like it. Anyway, I am going to go because I've waffled off enough and... Uh, yeah, there's only down to one, and I'm guessing that's probably you, Jeff. So thanks for staying in and uh, watching my video. <laughs> and yeah, if uh, this, I don't know if you can leave comments on this one, but if you can leave comments on some of my other videos, it helps the algorithm for YouTube to actually, um, yeah, like get them deciding on whether they want to make me a channel or not because like i said i need a thousand subscribers i need two hundred and forty thousand minutes of watch time and which is four thousand hours and i'm at about a hundred and fifty thousand so i need about ninety thousand more minutes worth of subscribing um watching so jeff you just gave me 30 minutes so that's pretty cool <laughs> by the looks of it anyway <laughs> oh that is gone all right, but yeah, um, so if you can comment on my videos and like and subscribe and I'll leave it at that, guys. Peace out and stay moist.